Hi, I'm Evan Golden, aka Golden TV, and welcome to another video podcast here at our TBT studios in Boca Raton. Today's episode is our Committed to the Community. It's one of my favorite episodes where we get to sit down and meet with someone that is a true humanitarian. They give back and really show the importance of making a difference in people's life. So in the studio today is the president of the George Snow Scholarship Fund, Tim Snow. Thank you so much for joining us today. Evan, thanks for having me. No, it's a blast. I'm so familiar, actually, with your foundation, but I wanted to kind of just learn a little bit more about the roots kind of how it got started. I think some of our viewers and listeners are not too familiar with it, so we wanted to give you guys a platform and just educate our viewers and listeners about what you're doing, the difference you're making in the future of today's just entrepreneurs and and educational leaders. So I think what you're doing is fascinating. I think once the viewers and listeners learn about your charity and your nonprofit, I think immediately they're going to want to get involved, whether it's from a donation standpoint, maybe from a volunteering standpoint. So let's back up, Tim. Tell everybody a little bit that's maybe a novice or not familiar what the foundation is, how it got started, kind of the genesis behind it. Great. Uh, Yeah, so the organization was formed in 1982 as a result of my dad, uh, George Snow, passing away in a helicopter accident. So my dad came to South Florida, specifically Boca Raton, in 1958 to take a role as a high school math teacher in uh, Delray, which was then Seacrest High School. Um, And later on, he went into the fields of real estate and construction and uh, did pretty well for himself. My family's always been into aviation, so he, after his retirement, formed a helicopter charter service, and that's how he lost his life. But while he was alive, he was always trying to help young people who were trying to help themselves, and so we thought it was very fitting to create a scholarship fund in his name to memorialize him and continue the work that he was doing while he was alive. It's fabulous. And I was reading an article before you came in here. A lot of people think maybe the whole foundation and organization started by maybe your father leaving a lump sum of money, but that was not the case at all. Yeah, you're right. Some people think that. And uh, every penny that we've ever given away, we've raised in the community. Um, we're a public charity. Um, and so everything that we do is is just trying to, uh, again, continue that work that my dad had, was doing while he was alive. Um, in the first few years, we, we would give away, you know, like $6,000. And last year we did $1.58 million. And I think, uh, in 2021, we're going to do something north of that. Wow, so that is so fabulous. I certainly applaud that. So what, what's going on in, in the college business and arena where there was a need for this? Well, the, the cost of education, number one, has far exceeded the, uh, you know, inflation, uh, for, decades now and it's really in many ways gotten kind of out of control and so uh, the young people that we help all have a financial need Um, they're all uh, uh, you know doing I call them rock stars they're all uh, doing very well academically they're all leaders in their school and their community Uh, and so we want them to um, continue their education and better themselves and that's what we're really all about um, one of the things that we do, you know, probably very well, actually very well, is uh, we just don't give them the money to go to college, but we're actually a support system for them. So uh, many of our students don't have that support system at home. Uh, maybe their parents didn't go to college, so they don't really know what to expect. Um, but, but we have a whole array of programs that we have in place for all of our kids. And what I always say is we treat them like our own student, our own kids. Um, we tell them, look, you're now part of our family, and we'll do for them whatever we do for our own kids. So. See, I really like that model aspect because it's not just here. here's your donation. We got you into college now. Good luck. And obviously, I remember when I first started college, I think the professor said, like, look to your left, look to your right. One of them won't be there next semester. Right. So I love that support system. Is that like an, do they get like a mentorship and alumni? Well, we do have that, um, but we just we do everything from we have a high school to college transition program that they all have to go through. Um, we get them. We have an emergency fund for them if they have an unexpected, non-recurring uh, expense. We can help them with that. We send them care packages to, uh, during their final exams. We've got seventy people in the community that. Um, bake cookies for them and pack the bags or pack the boxes up and send them out. So everything from getting them computers if they need them. If they don't, we get their college dorm supplies for them. Uh, Again, it all gets back to, you know, would you do that for your own son or daughter? And if the answer is yes, then we do it for our kids. That's great. And 
One thing I've noticed with your nonprofit is obviously so many nonprofits out there hold different charitable events to raise money, build awareness, exposure. You guys seem to put a different spin on. You got some team behind you. I've been to the the Rhinestone Cowboy Ball, the the Ballroom Boca Battle. Tell the viewers and listeners about some of these events that you're putting on. Well, events uh, are difficult to do, but they certainly have been the backbone of our organization since uh, we were created in, in 1982. Uh, and we think we've got some of the better events in the community. Um, we do. Uh, we have the uh, Cowboy Ball, which is uh, really our second biggest event now. And uh, um, that's been a wonderful event for us. I think we're going into our 27th year, if I'm not mistaken, on that. Um, and our biggest event is this, uh, what we call a uh, ballroom battle. And so we get eight people in the community and, uh, we partner with the Fred Astaire dance studio in Boca Raton here, and they teach our, uh, our volunteers, uh, a dance routine. And, uh, it's really taken on a life of its own. It's a huge event. Um, in pre COVID times, we'd have 900, 800 people actually uh, over at the resort. Uh, it's a great night total positive energy in the room. Um, this year because of COVID, or I should say last year because of COVID, we had to, to do it on television. And that actually turned out to be a good uh, a good uh, way for us to do it and to get around the, the whole COVID issue. Uh, and we're going to do it again that, that way uh, this year as well. It, it's such a huge success. I mean, people talk about this event months and months prior to it happening and then they're still talking about it months after did you see this dance they're streaming the dances online everyone gets into it they promote it so kudos to your team on, on just a fabulous way of promoting your organization and getting people involved in a fun way you know sometimes charity events can be a little boring i hate to say you hear someone no one wants to hear someone just kind of a talking head the whole event and please give us your money but when you have that crowd interaction and you have people voting it's just a winning combination so i just wanted to make sure that people could go to scholarship.org, learn about these events, get involved, and maybe you could even sign up to be a ballroom dancer. Yeah, well, we'd love that for sure. That's awesome. So go to scholarship.org, certainly learn about it. I wanted to touch about um, a little bit of a, of a, of a I guess, a, a more difficult topic of what you guys do, but that's with racial inequality. How is that playing a role in your organization? Well, I think obviously uh, the events this past summer have brought that uh, to the surface, I think, more than ever before. Um, it's interesting that you bring that up, and I'm glad you did, and I appreciate that. Um, I, we, I, I mean, we have always, I mean, we have served underserved communities since our inception, so it's sort of what we do, right? But uh, these past, uh, this past summer, again, has really uh, uh, shine, shown a light on that, for me at least personally. Uh, one of the things that we're doing, um, we formed a partnership with an organization called the Ron Brown Scholars program. Uh, they're out of uh, uh, Virginia. Uh, I've known about the program for many, many years. Actually, their uh, uh, CEO has been really kind of a role model for me. And they serve uh, African American students in the country. And they, they're they probably the premier uh, organization uh, with that mission in the country. And so anyways, we've we formed a partnership with them. And we're also doing um, three scholarships that are going to be specific to the black community uh, and what what's going to be great about that is we're going to um, as i said partner with ron brown so they're going to make our scholars a part of their program which is going to afford them incredible networking opportunities throughout throughout the country really and so we were just thinking look we're doing all these things for the underserved communities and particularly the black african-american community but what else can we do to, to help them more than we are now? And so we're real proud of that partnership. And we're looking forward to awarding those first three scholarships. or are $10,000 scholarships this year. Uh, one will go to a student in Broward County, and two will go to students in Palm Beach County. And I want to thank the Quantum Foundation for underwriting one of those. Our organization is uh, uh, underwriting one and a, a young lady in uh, Broward County's underwriting one. That's great. No, that, that's definitely a winning partnership. That, that's excellent. I mean, you ever just kind of sit back and, and kind of zoom out and think of how many people you've placed and, you know, how proud you're probably your father is looking down at you? Well, uh, you know, you don't get a chance to do that very often, <laughs> but I actually was writing a, a little bit about the history of the organization for another project that we're doing. 
And yeah, I, I, I'm very proud of it. I, I'm most proud that it, it, it's a community organization and everybody from the dancers at Ballroom Battle to just our list of volunteers and supporters. I mean, we have, you know, 80 people reading applications uh, and that's, that's a big job. You know, that's a 40 hour job over a, a period of a month. And so I, I am very proud of that. And uh, I mean, it's just so rewarding what you guys are doing. It, it is. Uh, I don't know if we've got time, but I, I just had uh, one of our scholars. Um, uh, we helped her in 1999. I was watching a 60 Minutes segment the other day. It was about the Artemis program in uh, at NASA. And as, as we know, the Apollo program put the first man on the moon. Now the Artemis program, Artemis is Apollo's twin sister, is going to put the first woman on the moon. So I, I remember we have a NASA engineer uh, working at NASA as a snow scholar and I emailed her and she's working on this program. She's a lead engineer on this program. So, you know, to see that somebody that we were able to help, uh, over 20 years ago, now is at a point in her career that she's having this profound effect and literally going to be a part of the team that's going to put a woman on the moon. I think it just, you know, it just, shows exactly the power of education and what uh, somebody like her has accomplished because of that. That's a, that's a great story. It's a, it's a true testament of what you're doing and, and, and the success that these scholars have. So uh, amazing. And I'm just reading about some of the testimonials that, that you come from. It's, you just got to be so proud of them when you see not what they just done and do in college and success in college, but what they do after. Yeah. And, and, and these kids are done so much in spite of these challenges, you know, a lot of them have, have had major challenges in their lives. You know, they, they've, uh, have been swimming up current, you know, for a long time. And that's the power of education and the gift of education and, and what it can do for somebody. It can change. It doesn't just change their life. It, it changes the lives of, of their children and their children's children for generations to come. Yeah, I mean, how many first scholars are, are first college graduates or first college? About a third of our wow. of our uh, uh, of our cohorts are. I, I, I thought that. that that that's pretty impressive, and that's really special. That that's that's really special. We always like to share with our viewers and listeners some kind of like golden nuggets uh, in life. Um, can you share with us? A golden nugget, some advice that you've learned that you could share with us that we could pass on? Uh, well, that's, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that, you know, if you, if you take the high road always uh, and, um, and just do the, try to do the right thing always, in the end, um, you know, you're going to come out on top. I mean, I, I, I don't really, I'm not much of a philosopher, as you can tell, but I, I think that, that's the, a good way to li live your life, and you know, you'll not have any regrets that way. What about um, people getting involved in your charity? I was reading a great article how you know most people think you just you just want to stroke a check or want money. Obviously, financial contributions are crucial in any nonprofit. What about just someone that could give your charity a voice, or someone that could volunteer, or or share an event on social media? There are volunteer opportunities. There's way people could get involved to support your guys' cause year round. Absolutely, we have so many ways to get involved. Like I said, if you're just even cooking, uh, cooking, baking cookies for you know for our care packages, um, I mean, there's just a million ways. Sitting on a selection committee. Uh, and again, it's, it's a whole community coming together. I love talking to people, people who want to become involved. And I often find that their background, you know, can, can do great things for us. Um, I mean, I remember one guy wanted to be involved and I found out he's a quantitative analyst. And I'm like, man, you can, you can audit our selection process. You can make sure we're doing everything properly. And so those kind of things, uh, yeah, we welcome and, and would love to explore that with your listeners. Is there with the selection process? Is, is that got to be a pretty difficult time, right? Because you get probably get so many great applicants too. You want to and you want to help everybody, of course. Yeah, we got just under a thousand applications this year. Um, like I said, we got eighty-eight people uh, reading those applications, so they'll score them all. It's all done online. The application's done online. And then we'll determine, and that's where we are right now in the middle of the process, determining who we're going to interview. So we'll conduct probably close to 300, well, probably a little bit over 300 interviews over the next couple of months. And uh, as a result of those interviews, we uh, will score them, uh, we'll ra actually rank them from that. 
And then in the meantime, we're doing a need analysis to find out, you know, exactly how much money do they need. Uh, and that's, you know, a, a task in and of itself. Uh, and then we'll sit down in a big room with a spreadsheet and figure out who gets our, our aid. And it, I tell you, it is very difficult because when you have to, you know, you, we, even though we're going to give out, you know, maybe $1.6, $1.7 million this year, it goes pretty quick. And uh, it is an extremely competitive process, unfortunately, uh, for the students. And we found that, you know, we might help 160 students like we did last year. You could go to that 250th student and read their application and go, oh, my gosh, we, we have to help that student. And so we're just limited by the amount of money that we have to give away. I mean, there are so many. Palm Beach County has so many so deserving young people and, and worthy young people uh, that uh, we, we could easily double what we're, what we're giving away now. When a student gets that call that they've been awarded by the George Snow Scholarship Fund, what, what's typically their reaction? Well, obviously, they're very excited about it. Um, we actually did a little, we, we actually, la two years ago, we had their parents film them, you know, getting, uh, we kind of gave the parent a heads up and said, hey, listen, we're going to be calling your, your, your son or your daughter and just take your phone out. And, and so it was very cool to, to see that and, and they're excited about it. And I'll tell you who's excited about it is their parents, you know, because at that point, uh, in many times, if they don't get the scholarship, they, it's a moment when the parent might think, well, my son or daughter is not going to be what they can be, all that they can be. And, and when they do, they realize, okay, now, now we can send uh, the student to college. We had a, we had a mother come in uh, some time ago, and she said, you know, you, got, you guys are taking – our kids where the parents can't take them and so that was very meaningful for me to hear that from the mother that's it's, it's so emotional it's it's beautiful and like you said earlier it, it you're not just you're not just affecting the student it, it's the trickle effect so that, that, that it's such an amazing cause I'm, I'm so happy what you guys are doing get to talk to you speak with you and i just wanted to help bring more exposure to your guys charity because what you're doing for these children these students is, is a true blessing and it's so needed now i mean Obviously, now more than ever with these costs, is, is it just keep going up every single year? Cost of college? Uh, it's it it does absolutely. Uh, maybe not at the rate that it has in the last ten or twelve years, but it, it does. It keeps climbing up there, uh, and then the you know the financial aid is not increasing either. And these schools now, with COVID, they're giving less financial aid because their resources have been tapped. Mm. Uh, so it's it's not a good situation for the students. And we're just happy that, that our community has stepped up for this organization and therefore is going to, you know, we think is going to benefit uh, more kids this year. Do you see maybe the future of you guys like opening up licensees or franchisees like throughout the country and offering this type of program and platform for students throughout the country, the world? Is that people probably talk to you about those type of growth opportunities? Yeah. So we, we in, in 2015, we got recognized as the National Scholarship Provider of the Year. And since then, we get a lot of phone calls of people that are, you know, asking advice. Matter of fact, tomorrow morning, I've got a call with a, a firm that uh, is a national firm that wants to um, give scholarships. And so we've never looked, you know, we've never tried to monetize that, um, but we probably should because we do have, we are very good at what we do. We've got a, a tremendous infrastructure in place uh, that, you know, a normal, you um, donor just doesn't have and and scholarship giving scholarships is a very uh intricate process um you got to make sure that the money's not getting uh displaced by the colleges i mean there's a, so many things that you have to if you're going to do it well you've got to really pay attention to and so we can offer that to to other organizations and we and we do uh certainly locally we do a lot of uh, administrate a lot of different programs and we're starting to branch out a little bit in that regard. Yeah, and I like how a lot of the nonprofits in South Florida kind of all help each other. You all are promoting each other's events and kind of all, at the end of the day, we're all, you know, trying to make changes and, and do better for the world and, and and give back and support any way we can. So I really like that element that you guys seem to really kind of cohesively all work together for different events as well. We do. I was just looking at our annual report and we list over 50 uh, local nonprofits that we have a partnership with. 
uh, in some shape or form. And so it, it, it is nice. Yeah, that's, I saw that, and I was like, that's really nice. that it, They're not competing. They're all trying to help each other, which, which is great. So uh, uh, very fascinating stuff, a true blessing what you guys are doing, and I, I certainly applaud it, like I said. Um, I'm going to continue to support the cause any way I can through exposure, through shows, and trying to get some more donations as well. And uh, I really appreciate your time for coming in here today. I hope our viewers and, le and listeners learn more about a fabulous nonprofit right here in our own backyard, truly touching hearts and changing lives and just giving people an opportunity that just really didn't always present themselves. So it, it's, it's awesome what you're doing. Well, thanks for giving us the platform, Evan. I appreciate it greatly. Likewise. Well, this is Tim Snow. He is the president of the George Snow Scholarship Foundation Fund. Go to scholarships.org. Go right to the website. Get involved. Learn more. Subscribe, of course, to the show. The podcast helps us bring on amazing, fascinating guests like Mr. Snow here. So we appreciate your time for watching us. And Mr. Snow, I just wish everything that you wish for, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining us till another episode here at the TBT Studios. Thank you. Goodbye.